winter slowly yields to spring. The ice breaks up and melts away, giving life back to lakes and rivers. A mallard duck couple searching for food swims on the lake now freed from ice. Canada geese are on their way back to their breeding grounds in the far north to perpetuate the species. For the purple martin landlord, it is now time to raise their purple martin houses to attract what it is considered by many as our most beautiful swallow, the purple martin. The purple martin is the largest of the swallow family and the only species of martin on the North American continent. On the average, Purple martins weigh close to 54 grams and are approximately 18 to 20 centimeters in length. The third year adult and older males have an attractive iridescent steely black-blue plumage. The purple martin is an aerial insectivore, a bird that feeds exclusively on flying insects. Purple martins can live an average of four to five years. The sound is very distinctive. It is a succession of loud gurgling and rolling notes. Very sociable, the purple martin nests in colonies, regularly inhabiting multi-compartmentalized man-supplied birdhouses. Predation, parasitism, nest site competition with other cavity nesting birds and habitat modifications have a significant impact on purple martin populations. Prolonged periods of cool, rainy and even hot, dry conditions can cause martin deaths due to starvation. The distinctions between sub-adult females and adult females are slight. The adult female has a darker chrism or undertail covered feathers, while the sub-adult females have a more whitish chrism area. The vocal capacity are less elaborate. Each year, males and females seek partners for the mating season. Typically, Martin couples are united only during one reproductive season. Females choose the best cavity or compartment and the best male for the breeding season to ensure the best genes for their offspring. Other superfluous males called bachelors, floaters, wanderers or troublemakers, as many landlords refer to them, remain close to the colony for the remainder of the season. Before their first breeding season, the year following their fledgling from the nests, young males become darker in color with purple splotches on their breasts. It takes a keen eye to correctly identify the yearlings or sub-adult males. In the first breeding season, they more resemble females than adult males, but sometimes we can notice some telltale purple feathers on their breast. One can notice that their necks are darker and their faces appear to have a Batman-like mask around the eye area. In flight, purple martins alternate short glides with rapid wing flapping. Like other swallow species, they are superb flyers, often changing direction in mid-flight as they pursue flying insects. Martins are very acrobatic. With well-developed wings, martins can reach the speed of 30 miles per hour and heights of 500 feet. The purple martins are neurotropical migrants, spending spring and summer in North America and wintering in the tropics of Brazil. During their stay in South America, purple martins mainly concentrate in Brazil in the Amazon River Basin in the Sao Paulo state of Brazil. The areas of São José do Rio Preto, Campinas, and Ribeirão Preto also show large concentrations of purple martins. The martins are also widespread in the São Francisco and Parana River basins. They spend most of this time feeding on insects over the tropical forests, 
farm fields and roosting in trees of the large city parks at nighttime. Their annual molt occurs during this time of year. As the evening falls in the southern hemisphere, purple martins congregate in large flocks to roost overnight in city parks where they benefit from the bright glare of city streetlights, protecting them against avian predators, mammals and snakes. City noises, street traffic and local human activity give the martins a sense of security from their predators. In the past, this massive presence of swallows in one area was considered a public nuisance to the local people, but now the local Brazilian people realize the economic value of the swallows as an important tourist attraction, bringing the important ecotourism dollar. On their migration to the Amazon basin, many purple martins stop over at Manaus, a city located on the bank of the Rio Negro River, close to its junction with the Amazon River. The purple martins perch and rest for the night on the oil refinery pipes where they benefit from the emanating heat. Birds are excellent navigators. With their keen sense of compass orientation, purple martins typically return to the very same successful nesting site of previous breeding seasons. Martins leave the Amazon basin in late November and early December. The majority of martins cross the Gulf of Mexico from the Yucatan Peninsula to the southern tip of the United States or to Cuba, while others highland hop through the West Indies and Cuba to reach the coasts of Florida in early January. By the early weeks of June, Purple Martins finally reach the most northern tier of their breeding range in the United States and Canada. During their spring migration, it can take the Martins approximately 6 to 16 weeks to cover a distance of up to 5,000 miles. Formerly nesting in rocky cliffs, hollow trees or old abandoned and excavated woodpecker holes, Purple martins nowadays nest almost exclusively in man-supplied birdhouses and hollowed-out gourds east of the Rocky Mountains. Purple martin housing is typically multi-compartmentalized housing. Martin houses can be made from wood or aluminum. Purple martins are also fond of nesting in large natural and plastic gourds. Though purple martins will nest in shallow 15 centimeter deep compartments, better martin housing is 22 centimeters deep. In deeper compartments, martins build better nests, lay more eggs, and fledge more young. Long before the arrival of European settlers to North America, Native Americans noticed that the martins were intrigued by the Indians' hollowed out drinking gourds hung out to dry. So Native Americans hung additional hollowed out bottle gourds for the martins to use for nesting. More and more people are trying to do the same today with natural or plastic gourds. There is always great excitement and anxiousness before the first Purple Martin Scouts arrive home on their breeding grounds. As spring arrives, so too do Purple Martins. The air is warmer and the Martin activity feverishly returns around the nesting house. A male chirbles in a compartment in hopes of persuading a female to nest with him. Soon, more martins will come to join them and rebuild the previous year's colony. Third-year adults and older birds, misnamed scouts, arrive first on the breeding grounds. While most scouts are males, many are also females. 
the younger birds or sub-adult birds will arrive later. In order to protect the gene pool and to reduce competition at the natal colony, most sub-adults search out new colony sites their first breeding season to begin their breeding history. In another colony, the martin season progresses and for some males, the battle with other aggressive males and challenges for females and the compartments is not quite over. Some purple martin males often defend several compartments along contiguous porches to attract several females at the same time. For many bonded adult martin pairs, nesting has already begun. Purple martins gather available materials along the shore. They make endless trip back and forth between the ground and their nest. The male is never far from its mate and often accompanies the female when searching for nesting materials. This is called mate guarding. A male participates in the construction of the nest. Unlike some bird species, both the male and the female purple martin bring nesting materials in their selected compartments. A couple of tree swallows sing in the undergrowth. Just like the purple martins, they too are completing their nest. Less fastidious, these spirited smaller swallow cousins are curious about any home that appears suitable for them, provided that there are enough insects around to feed their nestlings. A song sparrow shows its presence to defend its territory. At this time of year, the cranberry tree flourishes. This tree, also called mooseberry, was sometimes used as a medicinal plant by Native Americans. Each purple martin couple has now chosen a compartment that they will occupy day and night during the egg-laying and incubation periods. The couple must defend their nest against other purple martin pairs and many times against other bird species that are nest site competitors. Two non-native bird species that are particularly aggressive are the English house sparrow and the European starling. In 1850, a New Yorker named Nicholas Pike imported a first group of English house sparrows known also as weaver finches in Europe. These aggressive birds quickly adapted to their new home in America, benefiting from the human presence. 
Its three and sometimes four annual nestings are a major reason for its rapid expansion of breeding territories. Our harvest starling shall be taught to speak nothing but Mortimer. Even Shakespeare could not have envisioned the annoying consequences when he wrote those lines from Henry IV. Three centuries later, a misguided individual named Eugene Shefflin desired that this continent should shelter all the birds cited in the works of Shakespeare. In 1870, Mr. Shefflin freed 60 European starlings and 40 other birds in the following year in Central Park of New York City. Today, starlings reproduce by the millions. They compete for food and nesting sites with many of our native cavity nesting bird species. We should never tolerate the presence of European starlings or house sparrows in purple martin bird houses. It is necessary to trap and restrict these birds and destroy all of their nests present in purple martin housing if we want to give martins the best possible chances for colony establishment and success. nests of purple martins are low slung and are constructed of coarse nesting materials. The materials that purple martins use to build their nest are numerous. Straw, roots, brushwood, bark mulch, dead leaves and mud when available. At the end of the nest construction and during egg incubation, males bring fresh green leaves to the nest. Moreover, they may place mud in the entrance of the nest as added protection and defense. Patiently, like the spider that spins its web, the purple martin builds the nest that will accommodate its young. It generally takes two weeks or more to complete the nest construction. Sometimes mating is done discreetly inside the compartment but it can also be done on the ground when the couple is searching for nest materials. While a sub-adult male is bonded with a sub-adult female, the offspring of their nest are offspring of adult males of the colony. This results from extra pair copulation with the adult males of the colonies and inexperience of the young martin males to properly mate guard their females and ensure their progeny. Another day is ending. Ducks return to the shore while the sun sets down on the horizon.
Listen to the Purple Martin's dawn song. In the darkness of pre-dawn hours, the Purple Martin males sing the special song in the days after the first egg is laid. Purple Martin eggs are solid white in color and measure 2.5 centimeters in length and are about 1 centimeter wide. At the rate of one egg per day, others will be laid to join the first one, ensuring the species' survival. On rare occasions, Martin may lay eight eggs, but uncommon eight-egg clutches are very dependent upon very experienced adult Martin pairs and an abundance of flying insect foods. Incubation starts when the next to the last egg of the clutch is laid. Only the female has a brood patch to incubate the eggs. The brood patch is a bare patch of skin on the breast where blood vessels converge close to the skin, ensuring enough warmth to incubate the eggs. The female must often turn the eggs to heat them uniformly and so that the embryo develops properly. While the female can only incubate the eggs, the male can insulate them while she is out feeding. Incubation lasts 15 to 17 days. The male can sometimes find the incubation time very long indeed. While waiting for the eggs to hatch, Adult Martins leisurely pass the time. It is the calm before the storm. During this time, they keep their plumage in good condition. They spend hours to shake and clean their feathers conscientiously in order to keep them in impeccable condition and waterproof. Finally, a first egg hatches. As it is hatching, this small, naked, fragile and helpless nestling weighs only 2.75 grams. It cannot see. Its legs cannot support its weight yet. But already, it has the reflex to raise its head to eat the small insects brought by the parents. One after the other, the nestlings break out of their confined spaces in the eggs. Soon, these siblings will form a new family. The parents will now have to continuously feed them. Parents bring their nestlings more than 60 beaksfuls of insects daily. During the next 28 to 32 days, they will make nearly 2,000 trips to catch thousands of insects that they will feed to their ever-demanding youngsters.
Already at four days of age, the young nestlings have more than tripled their weight and now weigh nearly 15 grams. A cliff swallow feeds a nestling perched on a wire. This skillful mason that builds its nest out of mud is also gregarious and lives socially in large colonies. Each nestling eats more than its weight in food every day. Their pinkish skin color turns bluish as the first feathers appear. Soon their eyes start to open. The females must regularly brood the nestlings to keep them warm and avoid hypothermia. At this age, the young are very sensitive to cool temperatures, having no down or feathers to regulate their own body temperature. When the temperature drops and flying insects are scarce, the parents remain on the nest in order to keep the nestlings warm. Many times, martin nestlings launch themselves from their compartments. It is necessary to try and return the birds to their natal compartments from which they have fallen. It is also necessary to find out the reason why the birds fell from their nests in the first place. Sometimes it is due to hot weather conditions or the result of aggressive bachelor males who knock the little ones off the house and onto the ground. Other times, the nest is filled with ectoparasites such as lice, ticks, mites or insect larvae. In these extreme cases, it is necessary to completely replace the nest with new clean and dry material such as fresh oat or wheat straw. Interestingly enough, the birds will not be disturbed by such changes they will return to their compartment as if nothing had occurred. For the purple martins, the exhaustive search for flying insects to feed the young is instinctively their greatest concern. Ducklings grow older, well fed from the available food abundant along the riverbanks. Flying over them, the purple martins are chasing flying insects to feed their offspring.
the song of the cicada is spreading in the air while the sun floods the fields with warmth and light. The hot air rises towards the sky, making the landscape dance. More precocious than the purple martins, young tree swallows have already taken their first flight and won't return to their nest again. Many will slowly begin their fall migration towards the Atlantic shores. They will continue their trip south into the southern United States and Mexico, where they winter. At 22 days of age, a purple martin nestling's weight already exceeds 50 grams. Several species of flying insects compose their daily menu. Mayflies, domestic flies, dragonflies, damselflies, moths, wasps, ballooning spiders, cicadas, flying ants, even butterflies. During their first reproductive season, some sub-adults did not have the opportunity to find a mate and breed. They fly around the colony, observing the nestlings' growth, and many times causing trouble. We can see the interior membranes, the bright yellow flange of the nestlings' beaks. These membranes will become pink like those of the adults a few days after their first flight. The young nestlings become increasingly more vocal as each nestling tries to be the first in the entrance hall to receive the food brought back by the parents. Hey, don't push from behind! Because of the nestlings' rapid development, dragonflies and damselflies will soon be among their preferred foods. The adults will bring back a great quantity of them to their nestlings. They are now nearly three weeks old. At this age, landlords should not lower the birdhouse anymore. Nestlings can be easily frightened and launch themselves prematurely from their nest. While they may not be able to fly long distances or gain height, they can get some lift into the air, fly a short distance, and become lost. The bachelor males, or floaters, are now more present and curious as the season progresses. Some of them are very aggressive, forcing some nestlings to take their first flight too soon. Once on the ground, the nestlings will not be fed by their parents. The bachelor males also harass the nestlings during their first flight. Perhaps such harassment makes it possible to sharpen the reflexes of the nestlings and prepare them to dodge the attacks of avian predators in true tests of life. Nestlings now come and beg for their food on the porches. The young birds now come out for the first time. At 20 days of age, they weigh close to 60 grams, heavier than their own parents. That will be their maximum weight. From this moment on, it will decrease to stabilize at 54 grams, the average adult weight. All this activity around the nesting house does not seem to disturb this red squirrel resting with indifference. It remains quietly on its branch, knowing that it could not avoid reprisals if it ventured too close to the colony. The young purple martins now come out onto the porch with more and more confidence. They are now 27 days old. 
Obviously, their equilibrium is still precarious. In a few short days, they will take their first flight. An American goldfinch is eating at a feeder. It also benefits from the generous nature of the homeowner and bird watcher, rewarding the bird lover with its presence, colorful beauty, and its beautiful song. At 28 to 32 days of age, the nestlings are now ready for their first flight. If weather permits, they will live the most dangerous day of their lives. Parents remain close to their young during their first flight. They encourage, guide and protect them from any possible danger. After their inaugural flight, the young birds return to the colony where the parents will continue to feed them. Unfortunately, the return landing is not always easy or graceful especially if the porch is filled with other members of the family. They will have to work their way back to join the safety of the nest. Thus, hour after hour, day after day, the nestlings gradually leave the colony, leaving behind only the late nesting parents and their young. For a period of seven to ten days, the adult parents escort their youngsters back to the Martin house to sleep for the night. It is a practice specific to certain species of swallows that come back to roost in their nests after the nestlings have taken their first flight. This routine is also common to cliff swallows and barn swallows but the young of these species return to the nest for only the first two or three days after their first flight. After some arguments and some heavy landings, the newly fledged young, now called juveniles, return to their natal compartments to spend the night. Their parents will remain close as long as the young are safely sheltered in the nesting house. Often, the parents will sleep with the young in the same compartment or in an adjoining but unoccupied apartment. The Purple Martin stage in greater numbers now, preparing for their next departure. They will, once again, undergo an arduous migration that takes them over great expanses of water and over the tropical forests returning to their wintering grounds back in the Amazon basin. And then, one day, the absence of the purple martins announces the end of the martin summer. As their beloved purple martins depart, thousands of landlords are saddened by the deafening quiet of their deserted martin houses. Morning chirps, rustles of wings, graceful flying, and adept aerobatics will be nothing more than memories while we wait for their return again next spring. Now only photographs remain to remind us of their too short presence. <laughs>